it was fine, solid all the way up to this point, but uh, it just dropped out of nowhere on me. Um, so what I was saying was that the, the one one thing that will forever, you know, when the, when the help started arriving on the sixth or seventh day, and I, at this point, it's, everything's just kind of a daze to me. Um, there was a pickup truck loaded to the brim. I mean, supplies, food, water, blankets, clothes, you name it, it was, it was on that truck. I mean, I'm surprised that people even fit inside the cab because they had stuff packed inside the cab. But the whole point well, I'm getting at is that they asked me if I needed anything, and I, I told them no. I'm fine, but you know, the, the bungalows need a lot of help, and there's other people around here that need a lot of help. Uh, but, and I, I looked at their plate, and I asked them, you know, well, where are you from? They said they're from New Orleans. And... The, the woman, the old lady, the woman said to me, you know, New York was here for us when we needed you, and we are here for New York. And that is when I had my breakdown. That, 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 that's when I, that was my, that was when I actually first snapped. I mean, I just, you know, I'm a grown man here, and I just started crying like a baby. And my wife will tell you that, too. You know, that was, I saw her, and I just gave her a big hug, and I just started crying. You know, because we were gone, we had already gone six or seven days, with, you know, with that, without power, you know, a hot meal. I mean, I'm a coffee fiend, and I didn't even have, I haven't even been able to have my coffee. I mean, good thing is, is that you know, now I'm you know I'm able to do so. But you know, there's just, it's it's stories like that that you don't hear, and it's just it's phenomenal. I mean, it's just just people helping people. Now, I'm gonna, I want to make my way down to another area that was extremely devastated. And this was the part of Rockaway Beach Boulevard um, that actually went up on fire. The cause is still under investigation, but it's obviously, it was, it was a gas fire based on what store was negligent and not turning off the gas before the floodwaters hit. But uh, there's an entire block. I think it's, it starts at 113th to 114th and it just stretches almost up to 116th Street that was just devastated by fire. I mean, it was so dark from where I lived. I was able to see the, the sky lit up in an orange glow of, you can see the fire from my balcony of, of my house on my second floor. I peeked over into the alleyway and you're able to see the, uh, you're able to see the fire and it was just, and Breezy Point, can't forget Breezy Point, I mean, You know, Breezy Point was devastated. Hundred, over 100 homes destroyed. Um, unfortunately, I can't make my way out to Breezy Point. I would definitely show it to you because I think they need, they need, people need to see that too. But um, there's a resident only restriction on that area. If you're, the only way you can go out to Breezy Point is if you're a resident and you show ID. So that, that's not going to happen for me. But, uh, There was firefighters, some of the bravest that went against the orders. They went against the orders of the command that they were to maintain their positions and not go anywhere um, during the hurricane. And some of these firefighters, they, 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 they said, screw it. Part of my language, they said, screw it, we're going. They rescued people out of these burning buildings and you're gonna see them in a few minutes. It take a little while to get there, but they, they, they went and they rescued people out of that lived above these stores. I mean, the firefighters on 116th Street are just absolutely incredible, and, and they and they lost a lot of their brethren in 9/11. Um, the whole New York City Fire Department did, but they still they went out there in their fire trucks, braving five, six feet or more, you know, high floodwaters to save people. I mean, they they, they could they could have just maintained their orders and stayed what they were. They risked their vehicles, they risked their lives. I mean, that's what they do, but they went above and beyond. And Rockaway Beach is forever, is forever grateful to them. If you'd like to make a donation to support the recovery and leaf efforts, not only just here in Rockaway Beach, but the whole entire Northeast, you can uh, visit the link to the Occupy Sandy donation page, which is in my description of my event. Or you can visit my website, 
which is LC like Larry Charles, sunshine.com forward slash rockaway. And you'll find the uh, story of our plight as well as the link to the donation page there as well. And you can watch this video on there. You know, the only thing I want out of the public, and uh, this is something that Cammy asked, the only thing I want from the public is to know the truth. I want the public to see what the press is not doing. They're going to a, a, a few select cherry-picked locations and doing their broadcast, and then you know, the press here, you know, and then just like any other, any news organization, they will sensationalize, they will, you know, edit, and they'll, they'll misquote everything like that, if even they interview someone. But you know what? I haven't seen one person from the press do what I'm doing right now, which is walk through Rockaway and just showing you the devastation. Unedited, uncut, raw. This is what it is, and, and even then, it's been cleaned up so much, you just can't grasp the magnitude of what the destruction was. But you can see the pictures. I took a lot of pictures, and you'll find a whole lot of them on my Facebook. You go to facebook.com forward slash Donald, D-O-N-A-L-D dot D-A-V-A-N-Z-O, D -A -V -A -N -Z -O. go ahead, friend request me. And if you go into the uh, mobile image uh, album, there's so many pictures. I mean, I still have so many pictures that I haven't even had the opportunity um, to upload. But you'll, if you look at the pictures and you look at them carefully, you'll see that they're all areas. Those are the pictures 24, 48 hours after the storm hit. And I took those pictures, upload them, and then you see now as I'm broadcasting, 14 days later, 14 days, and people are here still do not have power. 14 days later, you know, we're still digging out, still recovering. But the despicable part here, the most despicable part, was that a lot of these heavy machinery, things like that, they didn't, they, they didn't start or arrive until four, five plus days when they started coming in. The sanitation department was here, I have to say, these guys, they really are New York's strongest. These guys were here in convoys the next day. I mean, even the police, the NYPD, they were here to serve and protect, do what they're supposed to do. And they were here that morning. The most eerie sound that I heard that morning was the convoys that were coming over the bridge of police, fire, and EMS. I mean, they were here, but they don't have heavy machinery. They don't have shovels. They don't have anything like that. To answer the one question of the one person who asked the answer cam, yes. Um, I'm actually a systems engineer. I manage and maintain servers and, servers and networks for a living. But uh, I'm a resident of Rockaway Beach and it was, it was important to me to, you know, when the storm hit and after the storm to just come out and show everyone the destruction. And again, this is seven, eight, nine days, you know, after the, the uh, recovery effort really tripped into high gear. I mean, there's still down power lines, there's still dirt on the streets here. The dust that's kicking up here, this dust is a, um, is a silt. It's very, very hard to, uh, to breathe sometimes, at times. Um, the Nor'eastern actually did us some good. The Nor'eastern enabled us to, you know, settle down a lot of the, uh, a lot of the dust and enabled us to breathe a little bit better. These homes right here, this bank of homes, 
can see here. The water was up above into the first floors of these houses. These first floors of these homes actually got water, but the basements were just devastated because the garage is kind of sublevel, and I believe that some of these apartments actually had the garages converted to apartments. And they were, they were devastated. I mean, five, six days ago, you would have saw just stacks and stacks and stacks of garbage. Again, if you're interested in helping support the recovery and relief effort of Rockaway Beach as well as the Northeast, Occupy Sandy has organized a donation page. They've been the forefront, along with the Brooklyn Kitchen, of helping support and keep Rockaway alive. They're ter two terrific organizations I'm a big supporter of, and I think they're, they're amazing. They're absolutely incredible. Currently, right now, I'm on Beach 111th Street. I'm going uh, to make my way uptown to 116th. But I specifically, I, I want to show you these buildings which were burnt to the ground. Again, I know some of you, I know, you know, listen, this, this is a public, uh, public site, and some of you are like, oh, it doesn't look that bad, but you know what? You want to see bad, go to my Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash Donald, that's D-O-N-A-L-D dot D-A-V-A-N-Z-O. D -A -V -A -N -Z -O. Go to my, mo my, my mobile photo upload page. And then you tell me it's not that bad. A lot has been cleaned up here in the last seven days. A lot. And the city, National Guard, private organizations have really kicked things into high gear in preparation for President Obama's arrival on Thursday. You know, just, just like anything else, you know, they've, they've, you know, listen, they've been slacking. They have been slacking for the last 14 days. Yes, Jess. If you uh, if you like to make a donation, if you look at the description in my uh, of my event, you can uh, make a donation via the Occupy Sandy donation page, or you can visit my website. Oh, I'm gonna Chuck go by. You go to my website, which is LC like Larry Charles Sunshine.com forward slash Rockaway. Fran, if you could be really kind and just uh, go ahead and drop some of those links into the, uh, into the chat occasionally here and there, that'd be great. Speaking of the Occupy Sandy movement, I mean, right here in front of me coming up, there's a van that came, it's from Maine. And that's an Occupy Sandy relief vehicle right there. This organization, that's right across the way. Um, Francis knows knows the name. I'm, I, I, I don't I, I don't know who they're associated with. I'm, my memory's so fried and shot. They've been here. This organization, with their solar truck, has been here since the day after the storm. They arrived. Solar power, wind power, turbine up top, free food, hot meal. They've been great. Coming up over here, this is where the uh, the fire, which stretches about a block and a half, started. They're not sure where, what it was caused and who was negligent of it. For a lot of businesses here, they turned off their gas, they turned off their boilers. Um, 
prior to uh, Storm. Some businesses, you know, didn't. Don't know who it is. Not making anything. But. These buildings were absolutely destroyed and devastated by fire. Started at the Social Security Administration office here. And just stretches. They've actually already started the cleanup effort here with the uh, with the uh, the claw track loader. But if you go to my uh, Facebook page and you look at my mobile uploads photo, you'll actually see the photo I took of this from this. I'll show you the very spot. This very spot right here on an angle facing Rockway Beach uh, Boulevard sign on 114th. This is a uh, Occupy Sandy donation location. They've been really, really helping out. They've been great. The Hurricane Relief Center. Yeah, and these are people whose homes themselves may have been destroyed. I mean, a lot of these people, a lot of people just opened their homes, pulled out a grill, and started cooking. You know? It's... New Yorker helping New Yorker organization help people dig out and recover. Excuse me. If you'd like to make a donation, you can uh, visit the uh, in the in the description. You can visit the Occupy Sandy donation page. Or you can visit my website, which is lcsunshine.com forward slash rockaway. That's LC like Larry Charles, sunshine.com forward slash rockaway. Businesses destroyed. Hopes and dreams crushed. But we, re we will rebuild. We are no longer alone. And we will rebuild Rockaway Beach better than it was before. But we cannot forget. And that's why I broadcast to you. That's why I do this. This is why I bring you this footage. The devastating events that happen that aren't documented by someone are the ones that are forgotten. And that's why it's important for me to document this, bring this to you live to live stream so you can see what we're going through. Fourteen days without power. Fourteen days. When was last time any of you went fourteen days without power? Some buildings, no water. Water mains broke. A lot of buildings, no gas. It means no hot water, no showers. No heat. A lot of homes around here are hot water baseboard heat. <coughs> it 
You can see I'm coughing a little bit from the dust that's kicking up on the street from the vehicles. We will rebuild. But not without your help. We won't recover without help. The federal coffers have over $400 million. A fraction of that. A fraction of that has yet to be distributed. It's paperwork, bureaucracy, inspections. And even then, uh, the, the first payout is only $3,000. That's not even enough, folks, to replace the belongings in a home or relocate. Think about it. The average home value, again, it's probably dropped here, but the average rental property around here is about $1,400, $1,500 a month. One month rent, one month security. If you got bad credit, two, three months, you know, security. And... The first payouts that I've got reports on were of $3,000. Can't relocate with that. Hotel vouchers. Hotel, the FEMA is giving out hotel vouchers, but the stipulation is you have to find a FEMA-approved hotel. Now, the FEMA-approved hotels are 70, 80, 100 miles away. Upstate New York, North Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, Northern Connecticut. The problem is there's no transportation to get to them. There's no shuttle buses. And if you do find one, they're not available. So FEMA's answer to your home being destroyed or not having power or electric or anything like that is, here's a voucher. Go get a hotel if you can find one. That's right. Here's a voucher for 14 days on us. But well, you gotta find a female approved hotel that does not exist. They, they are none left. And you need to find your own transportation there. And you saw when I was walking the boulevard here, all these destroyed vehicles in that. I apologize, I got a call in the middle of my broadcast. But uh, what I was saying was you saw all the destroyed vehicles. And. How are people supposed to get around to get hundreds of miles away? Most people, they have family, but they all live here in the Rockaways. Throughout the week and throughout the upcoming weeks, I will continue. I'm going to continue broadcasting. I think it's very important that you see the recovery efforts. Please share the link to my, my page. This video will be archived at the conclusion of my broadcast. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it on your Facebooks. Please, I ask you, tweet, tweet it, share it on your Twitter. It's important that the public see and the public know what's happened here. You know, my hurricane coverage, you know, I had over 300 viewers. And I was also featured on the Sandy Cam where I topped out at 58,000 viewers. I want to thank the 17 to 20 people that have been with me on this. Thank you very much. But it's important. It's, it's, it's not, it's 17 of you can make a difference. You can take the links to my video. Take the links to the Occupy Sandy donation page. Share them with your friends. Share them with your family. 17 to 20 of you that have been here on and off can make a difference.
another organization I, I really want to extend a, a huge sincere thank you to is the Rite Aid Corporation. 48 hours after the hurricane uh, after the hurricane hit and the flood of waters had receded, 48 hours later, Rite Aid showed up with a tractor trailer. And I'm not talking about a small one, I'm talking about a 55 footer. Distributing water. Rite Aid Corporation also opened their pharmacy very quickly to allow people who had your prescription bottle, you know, life saving medication, to get it filled at no charge. As long as it wasn't a controlled substance. This very right aid location here, who was hit hard, their parking lot was loaded with debris. Their store was flooded out. But you know what, though? The right aid corporation, they were there for us. And I ask you, if you don't shop at Rockaway, I mean, if you don't shop at, at Rite Aid, you start to, because the, corp the Rite Aid Corporation was here for Rockaway. If you don't have a Verizon cell phone, I ask that you, if you're not under contract, get a Verizon cell phone. Support those who supported us. If you can't make a financial donation, then you can support the corporations that supported us, that helped us. Rite Aid. Verizon. If you're from New York, if you're, you live in New York or Brooklyn, or you know someone in Brooklyn, you know, tell them su support the Brooklyn Kitchen. Make a donation to, you know, the Occupy Sandy uh, uh, Relief Fund. You know, I've walked this so many times, taking snapping photos and doing what I can do. And this is how they communicate with us. When I, when, I was in, when I was in Astoria, Queens, and they had the blackout, and the, Mer uh, and the Red Cross came, and FEMA and everyone like that were trying to help us out, they went around with bullhorns on top of vehicles making announcements. Now they completely re they, they rely on old school flyers. This is the lack of organization within FEMA. They just post these up. And they go along their way and they hope someone tells you about it. Or they hope that you have a radio. FEMA does as little as possible. They are a disorganized... Uh, FEMA is a disorganized organization. They are a front, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> they do minimum of what they need to do. Prime example. So, last week there is hundreds and hundreds of um, FEMA volunteers from other states. When I say hundreds, I'm talking ambulances, fire trucks, everything stationed over at Floyd Bennett Field. Can't go there, can't show you. And they have e track you know, the FEMA uh, yellow sticker on the back of their window. And they're, they're just sitting there. I've seen a couple of those vehicles come in here. You know, a lot of it's going uptown, but I've seen a couple of them come in here. But there's hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of FEMA resources that are sitting right now in Floyd Bennett Field that are doing absolutely nothing. Write your congressman, write your senator, tell them you saw the plight of Rockaway. Tell them it's disgusting how people are doing more for their fellow man and woman than their own government where we pay our taxes. It's that important. You know, after Hurricane Katrina, our government said there would never, never be another bumble like that again. And this time, it's not so public, it's not so publicized, the, how FEMA and Red Cross are just a bunch of bumbling idiots. They want your money, but they don't want to do anything with it. No organization, no structure. It's disgusting. It's despicable. <clears throat> the worst part is, is that some of these people, let's say you lived in one of these buildings, or who, who knows, wherever. FEMA can selectively say you're denied your claim. 
Maybe you didn't cross your T or dot your I, whatever it is. They're looking for reasons. And then if you want to go through the appeals process, it takes weeks, months. If you'd like to make a donation, you can find the links to the Occupy Sandy donation page. Or you can visit my website, LC Sunshine. That's LC like Larry Charles. Sunshine.com forward slash rock away. And story of our plight, the links to the Occupy Sandy page, it's all there. I'd like to thank those of you who are joining me today and were watching the video. Um, you know, words can't describe what we've been going through for the last 14 days. I mean, even this video doesn't do justice. You have to, you have to be here. You have to breathe the same dust and air and disgust that we're breathing. You have to see with your own eyes and smell with your nose the <coughs> devastation and destruction. Because not only are you smelling vehicle fumes, you're smelling oil. I mean, you're smelling everything, anything that leaks. All these vehicles destroyed. Every single one of these. They were... There's stats here. Like... Like an angry child took his hand and wiped it across a table full of matchbox cars. That's, that's the best way I, I, that I can describe it. You know, I have to say, I, I'm, I'm forever changed by this. I've seen a lot of things in my time from when I was a teenager and I was a volunteer EMT. Um, down in uh, Tom's River, New Jersey. So when I was in the, in the army, I've seen a lot of things. I've been to I've told a lot of things. But to live this, to see this, and think that in times of our need, the government will be here for us. You think that? That's that's not that's not the case. All these vehicles destroyed. Debris everywhere still. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on one moment, people. I'm, I'm broadcasting right now. I'm sorry. With only 10% battery life left here on my camera, um, I'd like to again thank everyone who's joined me today. I'm Donald Diavanzo. I'm the Rockaway Beach Eye Reporter. I broadcasted the hurricane before it made landfall, when it made landfall and the aftermath of the hurricane. I broadcasted the relief efforts. I thank you for your support. And if you'd like to make a financial donation, you can visit uh, the Occupy Sandy donation page, which you'll actually find the link at the bottom of the um, bottom of my event description. You can uh, also follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Donald, that's D-O-N-A-L-D dot D-A-V-A-N-Z-O. Please share my video, share my page, share the past videos I've done, just share and let it be known. Let it be known what happened here, what has occurred. Let people know the organizations that have been there for us and let people know about the organizations that haven't. It's important that the truth be known. It's important that the truth be told.
Rockaway Beach will not be forgotten. We will not go quietly. And we will fight. We will rebuild. <coughs> and most importantly, we will survive. I'd like to thank you for listening to our story today. I'd like to thank you for support you may you may bring to us be it financial be it social sharing just think of this I'm going to leave you with this thought before I sign off what would you do for your fellow man or woman in their time of need in a situation like this what would you do for 14 days without power or a hot meal or a shower. I know what I did. This is the Rockway Beach Eye Reporter. I'm on 102nd Street and Rockway Beach Boulevard. I thank you for joining me today. Please uh, share the links to my Facebook photos. It's like the, the flag you see right here. These construction vehicles. Just let it be known. This is right now. This is live. This is 14 days after the devastation. Hopes, dreams shattered. Lives destroyed. But we, re we will rebuild. We will recover. We will fight. We will survive. Thank you for your time. And if you'd like to make a financial donation, you can visit the, uh, the links that are in my description. My company website, which is LC, like Larry Charles, sunshine.com forward slash rockaway. Or my Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Donald, D O N A L D dot D Avanzo. I thank you. Please share. Stay safe. Stay warm. And thank you for your support today.